Hi, I'm Jessica Cameron, star of American Guinea Pig, Song of Solomon, and you're watching The 13th Wolfman. Hey everybody, it's the 13th Wolfman. You know how I'm back with me today. Today, Yes, she is back. She's beautiful. She's talented. She's done it all. She knows it all. Jessica Cameron, welcome back to Sit Down. Thank you so very much for having me. I'm honored to be here. I always love having you on. You're one of my favorite guests. Uh, you know, just it, it's just a great time talking to you. Now, we have you on specifically because you have a new movie out. I do. It's been out for a while, but we got we finally got around to reviewing it. And I was like, you know what? After we got after Kevin and I reviewed it, we're like, we need to get Jessica and Steven on. And well, it's so, like a few months. I, I want to say it was August twenty fifth is when it was technically released, so it's not particularly old. Oh, okay. I thought it was. I thought it came out a little bit earlier than that, but oh well, you know. Now, American Guinea Pig, Song of Solomon. If you people haven't seen this movie yet. You need to, and if you're, it, it's kind of funny because Jess, you you are. I mean, I know what you look like, but to some of the people going, "Where's Jessica?" You you're a little unrecognizable. Yeah, yeah, that's what like entire body and face makeup will do. <laughs> yes, but and I like they dyed my hair. I'm a brunette. I look very different, very, di and I go from like looking very different to worse and worse and worse. Yeah, this this is a cool movie. So how'd you get involved with Steven with this? You know what? I had seen Steven at a convention days of the day. I think it was in Atlanta. And that was the first time we'd ever met, even though I knew who he was and he knew who I was on social. And we found ourselves on stage together and he was the last person up on stage and there was nowhere for him to sit. But there was like a horse in between two sofas. And he was like, fuck it. I'm sitting on the goddamn prop horse. It's not meant to be sat on. Like, it wasn't like a prop. It, I'm saying prop horse. It was just like a little rocking childhood thing. You know, it wasn't in okay. for guests to sit on it. It was just sort of like there as decoration. So he sat on it and he was drinking something straight up. And like the gentleman that Byro is, uh, while the convention was, or while the panel was going and we were talking about independent film and he was drinking, he offered me whatever he was drinking. And I was like, okay. Uh, and we just became fast friends from there. Uh, and then from there, I begged him to audition because he told me he was doing an exorcist movie. And I've done a lot of movies in my career, although I've never done an exorcist film. I think that it's sort of a, a genre that, first of all, is really hard to do on an independent scale. And then also, there's just not, part of me, there's just not a lot of people that are making exorcism films that sort of bring anything new to the table. You know, right. I've really been offered a few roles in exorcism films, but it's like always the same exorcist knockoff kind of stuff. And it's just not my thing. So uh, I was like, you know, from what it sounds like, I'd really like to do it. Um, and he was like, you don't look anything like her, the girl I want. Um, and I was like, I could dye my hair. I could put in contacts. Like, we'll make it work. Um, so I had to beg him to audition. And then I had to ask again and be like, look, I promise it won't affect our friendship if you don't cast me. Just let me audition. You know, let me show you what I can do. Because I really feel like this could be a good project for me. So he did. And uh, the rest is kind of history. And it is a great project for you. I, Thanks. God, I love this movie. This this is something I've been, I've been waiting for. Like, I mean, we see a lot of independent stuff. And, you know, it, it comes down to it. That. It, it, there's there's good stuff and then there's stuff that just comes out you know you're just kind of like that's okay and there's and, that's neither good nor comes out <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and 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 you said it i mean there's been a lot of exorcism type movies and i don't think anybody can do an exorcism film including steven without it being compared to the exorcist because that's just the that, that that's the echelon. That's the goalpost that everyone's heading for, you know. But this does bring something a lot different to the game, you know. I and um, and it's it. I, I just I want to talk about it, but I don't want to say too much about it because I want people to discover this movie. It's the fourth movie in the American Guinea Pig series. Yes. Is which is, is their good dream label 
to say the yeah. least. Yeah. Yeah. Is there going to, I mean, is Steven going to do, I, I'm, I know I'm asking you, but you might know whether or not, is there going to be a follow-up to this? Um, I don't know if there's going to be a follow-up per se to Song of Solomon. I know that Biro has good plans for the American Guinea Pig franchise as like a whole. Uh, but I don't know if he's going to direct any of them. And I'm pretty sure there's no plans for like another exorcism film. Well, I only, I only asked because the ending was kind of open-ended. Oh, completely. But I also think like how the end, like, yes, in theory you could, but it would be like such a different movie. Right. Cause right. Like, the circumstance. Yeah. No. Yeah. And that's just, I, I, I just, I had to ask. Yeah. No. So, and like I said, you never know. Uh, Byro could decide otherwise, but yeah, I think he's definitely going to continue on the franchise, but not with anything that follows Solomon. Sorry, I have not had enough coffee, which is why I'm drinking coffee at five thirty. I, I, I was just gonna, I was just gonna ask about. So, we've had you on many times, and the one thing that you, you love to tell people is the fact that you sleep three hours a day. If that, but I don't like this past year. I've been a lot better about trying to get five or six hours a night. Hey, there you go. That's that's a that's a major improvement for you, right? Lap of luxury. So, in all of 2018, that's kind of been one of my goals. That's really good because she, if you don't know Jessica, she's a workaholic. She does she if she doesn't have anything coming out, then she's or or if she's not working on something, she's promoting something that's coming out. If she's not promoting something, she's writing something that she wants to do mm-hmm. or producing something. And it just. It's it's amazing the hats you wear, Jess. Well, thank you. We have to like we have to always keep the ball going, so it can be really stressful. Uh, but no, I basically I did like a bunch of research and felt that like the long term side effects. Like I'm not quite frankly, I think it's pretty. It would have been pretty self sustaining for me to get two to three hours of sleep a night for the next fifteen years or so, probably. <laughs> uh, but then I think it would make any of my life after that point significantly harder. So trying to trying to live my healthiest, my best life, you know. Yeah, th- that's great. I'm glad to hear it. I really am because you need to be around for quite a while. Hey, we, we so need, I was like, how do I live forever? We need our we need Jessica in our life. Right, but I did also learn like regardless of how much sleep I get, I still have to drink like two or three cups of coffee. Or else I'm just tired. Yeah, well, it happens. Yeah, so this movie, uh, it, man, I, I, one of my favorite things about this movie, and this isn't giving anything away, is that Jessica has to wear contacts. I do. I wore three different pairs of contacts, two of which were full scolaris, like cover the entire eye. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, is, I, I've never worn contacts in my life. I, I don't know the, whether they're comfortable or not comfortable. And doing movies, I know that in the past, you know, back in the 80s, they used to be just like thick pieces of glass that they put in their eye. I mean, but nowadays they're more, I'm, I'm guessing they're more flexible. Is it, are they uncomfortable to wear? Well, I keep in mind, I wear contacts regularly. So, like, I have contacts in right now. They're just personal okay. strength contact lenses. So, contacts in general are not difficult for me to wear at all. Uh, now, the challenge with these ones were obviously they work prescription strength, which means I can see close up, but I can't see super far away. So for the purpose of filming, it's fine. Um, but the full scolarises are hard. You kind of have to, like, get right in there and then, like, maneuver it around because it covers, like, your entire surface of your eye. So it's a process to get that in. Um, and even then... It was okay, but, like, they don't recommend that you wear them for more than four hours because your eye gets so dry because oh. it's sucking all the oxygen and moisture out of your eyeball, you know, uh, and your eye can't naturally lubricate something that big. I don't have that issue with regular contact lenses, but regular contact lenses only take up a small surface area of your eye. Right. They, ju- they just cover the iris and right, the, yeah. the, 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 so the, the main part of your eye. Enough fluid to keep the contact lens moist, but when you have these bigger, larger ones, it can be very difficult. Now, the fact that they weren't hard was great. They're not rigid anymore. Like you mentioned, they're now really soft and pliable, but they're still very tricky. And then because it was an independent film, we had the bed, which was like not a real bed. It was a, a movable set piece that Jeremy Cruz designed so that some of the effects could be done. So it was just like 
wood that they basically they disassembled the bed they shot the bed for like one or two days like the actual bed and then they took the bed out and then they brought in this bed and put it together so they literally assembled it in the room and then like remade it to look like the other bed but the problem with that was that in doing all of that you get little microscopic particles of wood that fly like as dust through the air that just sort of hang in the air for days so that made the contact lenses very painful and very scratchy for the first like four or five days yeah uh there's there's a scene at the beginning where again i'm not giving anything away where the 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 psychiatrist says something to you and he looks at you and you have double double eyes and then they looks back and then you look, and i was like I, I wasn't sure i was like did i see that right <laughs> you know that was a very cool scene it's very subtle that's the, the, the nice thing about this movie a lot of it's it, a lot some of it can be right in your face um some of the gore but it's a very subtle film overall like it's very nuanced if you watch it a couple times as well it's got like many many layers yeah so well along with this movie coming out do you have anything else you're working on right now I yeah mean, you yourself finishing up lilith uh, which has been in post for way too long. Mania is getting ready to come out. I haven't received final dates on that, but it should literally be very, very soon. Um, An ending is just final stage of post, so hopefully we'll start a festival submission and do a good festival run with that. So the PA is getting finalized, so a lot of good stuff. And then, you know, a bunch of stuff in prep. So fingers crossed it'll all continue. And not to mention, you know, there's a slew of movies that I've acted in that we're just waiting to come out, essentially. You know, the yeah. two, which I shot in London, which I cannot wait. Rest Stop, uh, which Paul and his team did such an amazing job with that I think we're going to start seeing some stuff soon. That was like a Stephen King short that I did. Yeah, so she mentioned the time in London, and this was the last time we had you on. Well, I don't know if it was the last time, but one of the last times we had you on was when you were on for All Through the House. Yep. And you're yep. wandering around London at yep. 2 in the morning. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> on the phone skyping with us that's what you do when you're in london it's just such a cool thing i mean it was who, who does that i just jessica because <laughs> like I, you know i didn't know i was like i don't know where i'll be <laughs> i'll be accessible luckily i have t-mobile and it works really well in london yeah it did it worked great but yeah, so Lilith and Mania, we've been waiting. Well, Mania and Kill the Pia, we've been waiting forever for. Because that was, what, 2015 when you did that? Yep. You know, Lilith, it's been a while. Um, no, we did that in 2015. Did you? Mm-hmm. We did all three of them together. Okay. Because Kill I, the Pia is, is following is, Mania and Lilith. I always travel cross country to make the movies. Okay, for some reason I thought Lilith was a little bit newer, but yeah, so you all know, three of those. It used to be called Desolation, and I renamed it. Then that's why, okay. Yeah, that's- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we've been waiting for those forever. I, I mean, I saw footage of of this stuff back when, you, when I met you at Crypticon. You know, you're like, check this out, and I've been waiting forever to see this stuff. Mania, I've been waiting forever, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm hoping that whatever you ask for you get you know this year you know and, and this following year you know when, when you when you want to make a movie we need more women writers directors producers we really do thank you i i agree especially you know if we have people like jason blum who are foolish enough to actually say and think that we have no women that are interested in directing horror that means that we need to have a stronger presence because obviously it's just not strong enough yeah it's we, we've had, I mean, you and uh, I mean, we've had a few female directors on here, but I mean, the other one I'm thinking of right now is Megan Fields Johnston, who did uh, The Ice Cream Truck. Oh, such a good movie. You know, I mean, th- that's just two right there. And I mean, there, there's vast many more, you know, that are out there. So let's get those women behind those cameras making some really cool, fo- really cool horror, right? I agree. I mean, obviously, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got to get ready for the live show, so 
if you want people to follow you on social media, where can they find you? Absolutely. I love social media, as you guys probably already know. I am on Facebook as Jessica Cameron. I have a fan page open. The personal page is closed. Um, I have actress Jessica Cameron on Instagram. I am Jessica Cameron underscore on Twitter. And then uh, Heather Dorf and I do a fun little YouTube show every week called Scream Queen Stream. You can find that on YouTube or ScreamQueenStream.com. And also check out Inside My Indie Life YouTube channel. It's where I post random shit, everything from film screenings, film premieres, get ready with me, makeup videos, dog videos, just whatever I feel like putting up that day. She loves her animals. Oh, very <laughs> much. I saw Solomon earlier. Such a cute little dog. I want to thank you for coming on again, Jess. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. So for Jessica, I am the 13th Wolfman, and you know, we're going to go on the prowl together. <laughs> yes, please.